I'm going. Keeping your companions alive in the outer world supernova mode can be tricky. If their health reaches zero, they're dead and gone for good. This guide will hopefully help you stand a fighting chance. I'm no expert, but I am someone who struggled to make it through even the most basic enemy encounter without my companions dying at the start until I came up with some strategies that I'm going to share in this video. First, don't engage enemies head on. Unlike some games where the companions are little more than a passive DPS boost, your companions in the outer world particularly in supernova mode are important strategic characters the enemy will focus on them in the hopes of taking them out they generate aggro and it's quite easy to end up in a situation where the enemy can see them as a larger threat than you are examples are the easiest way to describe this sort of thing so i'm going to share an example where i'm attacked by a bunch of enemies unexpectedly in a village and try to escape so here we are we're just wandering around here everything's fine what a lovely village. Suddenly there are four enemies on the map. So we need to hightail it out of here. So I'm giving Pavati move orders to come down here and get into cover. Uh, we do manage to get one hit off here with Parvati. But if you watch what she does at this stage, when I tell her to get behind this container here, she's backing off very slowly, uh, firing her pistol, moving slowly into cover. When what I really need her to do is to move into cover fast. Now, as the enemies come around the container, she's continuing to fight. She's getting surrounded. I'm not sure who's aggroed her, who's aggroing me, because she's continuing to fight. It's very hard to keep track of things in that case. Unless we actually run away from the encounter entirely, we're probably dead at that point. To get around this, we're going to go to Pavati's AI settings, which is the fourth option here. Same with all companions and their behaviors. The important one here is the mode, which is aggressive at the moment. This means that she will attack anything you attack and she will move from target to target within a given encounter. She won't stop until that combat encounter is over. It leads to the fact that you don't have that fine control over the uh, uh, over her movement in combat, which is very important in this mode. You do have defensive mode, but in my experience, this is very similar to aggressive mode, and I'm not sure what the distinction is. The tooltip doesn't make it clear. And also in combat, she seems to behave very similarly to aggressive. So I found defensive not to be much of an improvement. The thing I would recommend is passive. This means they will only attack targets that you specifically designate with the attack command. So they won't start attacking when you attack until you give them an attack command. And they will also respond to your follow and return to me commands very, very quickly. Uh, that is the one that I'm going to suggest that you use. Um, Distance is less important, but, you know, depending on whether you're using melee or ranged, you might want them closer to you or further, or further away. I put mine on a far distance and I tend to put them on ranged as well because I don't want them close up to the enemy. I want to be telling them to move into range to do things like melee and stuff. So start off in range uh, and I go for the far distance. So if an engagement does happen, hopefully they're far enough away from me that I've got time to give them a command for them to flank around an enemy or attack from a slightly different angle. If they're really close to me, then we're both pinned at that stage, aren't we? Let's back out of here for now. We're going to come to our controls and edit keybinds. The important ones for your companions are these ones here. That move command, so point anywhere in the environment and click it for them to move to that specific point. Hold it down if you want them to just return to you. That's the companion attack command. We're going to be using that to designate specific ones and special abilities. These are really, really cool for setting up ambushes and that type of thing. So make sure those are bound to things that feel intuitive to you. So examples being the best way to show things, let's do this. So we've given her a command to move behind those boxes. We're always looking for ways to flank people and find bottlenecks. So while she's behind those boxes, they're not going to see her. They're not going to aggro her. So if I trigger this guy and start bringing them towards me, We'll hopefully have the opportunity to use her special move again. Then she's obviously out in space and vulnerable. So find another place for her to go to behind those boxes. In this case, we've got the other guys still coming down. She's regenerating her special move. So we can't use that impact move at this stage, but we can potentially move her to the other side of that guy and maybe catch this guy in a crossfire. It doesn't kind of work very well here, 
but um, you can see the principles involved. It's kind of moving your companions around the enemies as the combat happens. And you can call it micromanaging if you like, or you can call it being a good leader to your party. That's the way I like to think of it. So again, backing off. And we're going to find a position for her to ambush because her special move is regening at this stage. So if we move her up there, while this guy comes around the side of the boxes, uh, we can hopefully do another jump on him with her hammer move and finish him off. So that's basically what I would suggest doing. You're kind of moving in combat with your companions, finding places for them to go, flanking, always looking for opportunities to catch the enemies in crossfires and take them by surprise. We want to be in charge of the engagement and kind of overwhelm them rather than them overwhelming us and use the companions in that way. And with the settings as they are, with the character on passive, if things do go from bad to worse, when you decide to absolutely flee, you can give those orders and you can hightail it out of there without the companion getting stuck trying to attack and slowly backing off firing and stuff, which is no use at all. Okay, so I hope this guide helped you, the principles of kind of trying to keep companions alive in combat. Any questions, do let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. Bye!